Hello everybody, my name is Matthew Vecchio and before we begin our first episode of Volume 1, I feel I need to explain a few things first. I've got to set the scene, I've got to paint the picture. Volume 1 is all about Voxon's display technology. Voxon Photonics is a company that I'm involved with and we are the creators of the world's most advanced volumetric display. But you're probably thinking, what is a volumetric display? A volumetric display can show things volumetrically. You see the length, you see the width, and you also see the height of the image. Our commercial volumetric display is a VX1. VX1 is a volumetric display capable of rendering 3D images inside an 18 by 18 by 8 centimeter volume. So we can show things like 3D models, we can show animations, we can play games, we can show complex 3D data, and it's all viewable from any perspective. You can walk around the device and you can see it from that viewpoint. You don't need any headgear or glasses, you can see it with the naked eye and multiple people can see it at the same time. So Volume 1 is our chance to really document our endeavours into the world of volumetric display technology. Each episode we're going to choose a different topic or theme and really going to deep dive and have that discussion. All right, now I've set the scene, the context is provided, we can finally begin our first episode of Volume 1. Welcome to Volume 1, this is our first episode, and this episode is all about Leap Motion and Leap Motion integration. So before we begin, I'll just introduce myself again. My name is Matthew Vecchio, and I am joined in the Voxon studio with... Will Tamblin. And Gavin Smith. And we all work at Voxon, believe it or not. That's right. It's all an in-house job today. So as I said, we're talking about Leap Motion. So recently we made up a Unity demo which focused on hand tracking using Ultra Leap's Leap Motion product. We ran this demo on a Voxon VX1 volumetric display. And what we got was basically a 3D hand avatar interacting in a volumetric 3D world. Our demo was a simple sandbox demo where you could have your hand in the volume and you could pick up um, various cubes and a bowl and throw that around. It was enough to see the potential of using leap motion or hand tracking uh, device technology with a volumetric display. So I just want to throw a question out to everybody. Um, how did it feel to use? It was actually surprisingly good. It, there's something quite intuitive about the way that you just lost that differentiation between seeing a physical hand and actually seeing the 3D representation of the avatar of your hand. Mm -hmm. And after a little while, it just became perfectly natural. Uh, it just was like an extension of your body. Yeah, and uh, when when you put your hand into the, the, uh, the camera, there's obviously a camera camera in there in the leap mm -hmm. motion, and it's seeing your hand. But what was what was really interesting, or what was really cool, was how low latency it was. I thought there'd be a lot more delay between the processing and rendering of the hand. But as soon as you put your hand into the viewing box to see that little hand, it wasn't a one-to-one -one scale. It was a smaller version of your hand instantly moving in time with your hand. It just felt uncluttered and it felt like we were there was less barriers between you and uh, some sort of ex digital experience and how <clears throat> i have to ask how did it feel picking up that first digital cube with your digital hand again again it was it was almost <laughs> a little bit surreal because it was it took a while to understand the amount that you needed, the distance that you needed to move mm. your hand in the physical real world versus the digital avatar representation. So you ended up having to move your hand a little bit further. Once you sort of got underneath the cube there and were able to sort of pick it up, the, the physics of the of the cubes and they were quite slippery and quite hard to hold onto. Mm. But once you had it in your hand, it was actually quite yeah, satisfying. Yeah. And, the, and the, what we were effectively doing in the demo is using Unity's physics to allow the cubes and the and the balls to interact with the mesh of the hand. Mm. And so because the cameras were good enough to track individual fingers, you could kind of ripple your fingers and make it bump Move over around, them. Yeah. But the, the, I guess the most strange thing in our demo was specifically the lack of uh, tactile feedback. Mm. So you could see there's, a, there's an object in your hand and you could bounce it up and down and throw it about, but you couldn't feel it. But your brain was saying that you should be able to feel it. So it's almost like you've was, got yeah. some loss of nerve sensation or something it, strange. It made you appreciate or understand how important touch yeah, and tactile is. Tactile feedback, tactile, yes. Tactile yeah, feedback, yeah. 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 So do you think when using the demo for the first time, I, I noticed that when people first saw it, 
they were excited and they were smiling and they want there was some joy in it. Do you think there's something subconscious about the experience or that there is something human about uh, it? I think yes. I think the answer is yes because people who have grown up with computers have. You know, if you go back to our generation, you know, you start off with keyboards. What is our generation? Yeah, no. old, uh, <laughs> you had, yeah, you know, you had keyboards, and then you had mice, uh, and that's largely been it. You know, there's been a little bit of playing with, you know, games and connect, you know, 3D cameras and things. Mm. But most people, when they interact with a computer, they have to at least touch it. And even with modern generations with an iPad, you have to physically touch the screen for something to happen. And so, or even with your game consoles, your game Xbox consoles, controllers, PlayStation, you're actually or, physically yeah, interacting with something. Yeah, and so. Doing that, doing that, uh, that, that feeling of, of touching the stuff, it's like you're connecting the physical world directly to the digital yeah, world. Yeah, it's like you're in there. It's, like, oh, it's almost like a mind control thing. It's, it's, it's just a magical thing, I would say. I was going to say spooky, but it's more magical. It's surreal, it's yeah. surreal uh, sort, of, sort, of, sort of experience. So it's like going from, if you try to think back to the first time you ever used a mouse, or if you're, perhaps if you're trying to teach an elderly, elderly relative how to use a <laughs> mouse on a computer screen, and it takes a while to figure out that if you move your a hand on this two-dimensional plane then the cursor on the two-dimensional screen moves around and mm-hmm. at one point at some point it clicks and you actually understand this is how that device interfaces with the with the virtual you know with what I'm seeing on the screen and I had that same moment with the first time I used the the leap motion with our volumetric display is that that moment of oh hang on a second this is actually using a three-dimensional tracking device to actually interact with a three-dimensional volume and it was that the same kind of a ha moment that you have we start uh, yeah. wow so you got better at it as time went yeah, absolutely it was a, there's a real bit of an art to to and I think that just comes down to the fact that the demo that uh, you guys put together was was done, done what a day uh, I think it was three days three days we're not that good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we spent three days making it um, so yeah Gav you bring up an interesting point when you talked about other motion control devices I just wanted to talk about how how the leap motion picks up your hand. Yeah, so the leap motion is a, it's a, it's a stereo infrared camera. So it's got two eyes, a bit like a person that look up the way if, if you're operating it in desktop mode and down the way if you if you attach it to a VR headset or something like that. So it's it's solely reliant on stereo photogrammetry uh, or the stereo separation of these cameras to look at your hand and see it from two different directions. Mm-hmm. And based on that stereo separation, it can it can determine pretty accurately where certain parts of your hand are. So there's tracking data that comes back from it, the, the points of the fingers, um, you know, you can get the palm of the hand, things like that. So it, it's really up to the programmer to what level you use it. You know, you can, you can access the native imagery that comes out of the camera, but ultimately you're getting a bunch of points from the camera and then you're tracking, uh, you're using those points to drive uh, a skeletal hand or a mesh or something mm. like that. Do you have any ideas of um, what sort of programs or applications you would use um, something like Leap Motion with um, so Voxon technology? I think from just the uh, experience I've had with it recently, the biggest thing is, is really good fun. There's it's something, fun. There is something... More games. Yeah, more, more games. games. Absolutely. It, is, it really is good fun. Mm-hmm. Just to be able to... I, I, for the, the, the blocks demo, I think the most satisfying thing was just rage quitting and slamming all the blocks <laughs> off the table. Because yeah. and, and, uh, you don't have to tidy it up uh, Exactly. You just yeah. press a button and it's magically tied up. So you want a volumetric table flipper. That's, yeah, that's exactly that's what, what you want. want. That's and I think other things that it can be useful for, because it's very tactile and you get a very close... Re- if you've got a, a skill that is to do with your motor, you know, your fine motor skills mm-hmm. that can translate well into a computer, then I think you could make up some demos which were artistic based, so a bit like tilt brush in VR, mm-hmm. so drawing, it's much easier. If, if anyone's trying to draw and paint with a mouse or a keyboard, it's very difficult. By using your fingers in three-dimensional space, you could do some pretty cool stuff. And, so like and sculpturing, sculpturing, right? maybe maybe music. Um, Playing the digital, the digital, the volumetric, the digital volumetric piano. I thought you, you were know? going to say the didgeridoo there. The didgeridoo, you could do the the digital didgeridoo. Digital digital well. <laughs> so you yeah, I think anything where expression can translate well into the digital domain. And there's other more sort of. Uh, more practical sort of not as entertaining things where if for example we've had a lot of interest from the medical sector in our technology and if you're scrapped up and 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 uh, in a in a surgery somewhere you don't want to be touching a device to be able to yeah uh, move along the in, or interact mm. with the medical imaging uh, 
practical things, uh, interacting with things without touching them. Yeah, that's great. That's some great ideas there. Now, um, a more technical question. How easy was it to integrate the Leap Motion SDK with the Voxon SDK? How did that process? It was it was very easy. I downloaded the latest Leap Motion drivers from their website. Their website, yeah. And I downloaded our latest SDK from our website. And should I have had that on your computer. Yeah, I should have had. <laughs> uh, and I created a Unity environment, a new scene, a drag both assets in and effectively use one of one of the existing uh, templates. templates for the rigged hand and then we just dropped in a few physics based objects so to make the objects react with the hand it was a case of applying uh, some physics some colliders and making sure they collide with the hand and then the rest of it we I think we just put some walls around it so that when you played with the objects they didn't always fall off into space. I don't know if that was uh, the, the start off with everything just fell off the edge. But we were like uh, that. Yeah, like yeah, that. It was more it, it, Yeah, it was it, that the whole the first iteration of that demo was probably working within a few hours and then we polished up over the space of a few days. Mm. Um, so here's some more fantasy questions. I think we want to go into thinking about forward. What do you think about having a multiple users using the leap motion? So you could have multiple people trying to use the same one, or you can have four leap motions all around it, our device. Well, I think that'd be great. I think it'd be really good fun to have, even if there are four users around the one the one box on VX1 display. That's eight hands. Eight hands. We can we could do that, or uh, even having it controlled remotely. So you've got one one uh, device in one location another one across the other side of the world and you could actually have some sort of uh, crazy tennis game that you're playing mm. across the world so um, there's that, that side of things um, I think it'll be fun to have you know instead of how we did in our demo where if you put your hand into the leap motion, you saw a version of your hand on the volume. But what if you had like a monster hand, or if yeah. you had like or, or a giant crab hand, giant or... diggers, or something like that? That'd be yeah. fun. Fantasy yeah. hands. Yeah. That's the new app. I yeah. Think. Yeah. And from a technical point of view, I don't know. We've not actually tried multiple leap motions because we only have one. The other, the other, <laughs> the other thing is uh, um, they're not. They're very cheap. Yeah, they are cheap. <laughs> the, the other thing would, would be fun to experiment with is the. Uh, uh, haptic feedback and whether, mm, we can, that awesome. whether we can actually combine the two. I do know that Ultra Haptics, um, they actually have a haptic feedback device which can integrate with Unity. So it would be fun to experiment, experiment with, with the feedback and the leap motion and the, and the and, volumetric display. And, and I think if you did get that haptic feedback, which would be the sense of touch with leap motion, uh, you could really um, use user, user interfaces and pick things up with a lot more ease because you would have that, yep. that extra sense that... Do you think it would be possible to create a user interface that's totally dependent on something like Leap Motion or using, you know, sort of touch or motion controls? And do you think if we had a user interface totally like that, would it actually be practical? Or do we still always need to have some... It's already problems? happening. Uh, I know people have tried this before to various degrees of success. So with, with Microsoft, with the Kinect and the Xbox, you know, the, the, there was a big fanfare around Kinect 2 as a as user interface. And it it was really good for certain experiences, but for other people got the... Gorilla, was it the gorilla? Yeah, gorilla it's, it's, arms, it's when you have to have uh, your arms floating yeah. up in front of you for an hour, your arms will get tired. And they, they will get tired. To it as mm. and, arms. and so using your arms uh, and your extremities like that can be tiring, yeah. especially if you're used to using a controller. But then if you look at what's happening with virtual reality and augmented reality, where you know, you're know you taking uh, camera feeds, you know, the, the, the latest Quest 2 is, has now got applications that they're using the cameras on there to, to, to mimic your hands. And being able to navigate entirely in a virtual environment using your your hands, I think, is is probably quite plausible. Okay, so more development in that yeah, space. More development I think space. it's just an exciting yeah. time yeah. to be even I, slightly involved yeah. in in that sort of interactive mm. interactive experience because the technology is is advancing so rapidly that before we know it, there's just going to be a completely seamless uh, yeah. divide between that uh, the, the digital and the physical. And what world. we see now, you know, how much you use your hands in these environments will change as software develops. If you write, you know, 20 years and see how long it took to create something. It, you know, it, made it, it might be unrealistic to spend two days to, to model an animation of somebody using, you know, a mouse and, and a, mm -hmm. a program. But, you know, you fast forward to where we are now and you've got all these tools at your, at your, at your disposal to do that. So you might be able to do that with your hands simply by selecting from menus and dragging and dropping things in a few minutes, in which case it becomes completely plausible to do yeah. things that previously were 
unimaginably complicated. Brilliant. So we're about to wrap up. So is there any final things you want to say about Leap Motion? how you felt about it? You, you're excited to continue developing yeah, it, with it's it? It's just been a joy to play with. It really has. It, yeah, it's, and, it's, and uh, the compactness of the device is one of its key features. You put it on the desk and if you listen to what other people have done and you follow some good guidelines, you can make something really compelling quickly and there's lots of more experiments that we should do. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. That is our first episode of Volume 1. Thank you, Will and Gav, for joining me and talking more about Leap Motion and the volumetric display technology. 